What up, what up, what up? I'm Brian Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And today we have a special episode. Artists, we have a Ask Me Anything episode. For those of y'all who do not know, we have our private space. And any of y'all who come into our free private space, we do these sessions where artists can literally ask us anything a couple times a week. And we have some great questions that we think are really going to be impactful for y'all. We're going to cover topics like merch today, super fans, and doing shows for those super fans. We got topics like LinkedIn. That's mm-hmm. like a, a whole nother beast, but there is value to it. So we'll tease that as well. And last but not least, a small tip to get more shows. Now, Let's get right into it. And by the way, we answer these questions in the network as well. But on these videos, we're going to give even more information than we do in text. So Elijah Cole asks, you ever see a time where you guys teach strategies to bypass the DSPs for the most part and concentrate on spaces that we can better control? I'm looking forward to strategies on making money early on. It takes a lot of streams to have anything left. He ain't lying, man. You ain't lying to logic. It do take a lot of streams to make any money. A whole lot of streams. You need about a thousand, thousand streams just to you know, get a happy meal, bro. It work <laughs> out like that. Um, do we teach that? Yeah, I feel like that's most of our strategies aren't really platform dependent. You know, like yeah. we may talk about them in context of certain platforms, but that's because y'all have asked about the same platform. That is it's right. really more on y'all than it is on us. You know what I'm saying? I we agree. teach growing an audience, and you can put that audience wherever you want to put it using really the same couple of strategies. Some yep. some ad strategies here, some influencer strategies there, and a nice little well-rounded content strategy to go on top of that. That core strategy can be directed at anything. Right. You know, like I said, most artists choose to direct it at DSPs and streams, but if I run, what's the difference between me running ads, pushing people to my Discord, and me running ads and pushing people to my Spotify? On the top level, there's no real difference. There's Certain things you have to think about at the bottom of the funnel, you know what I'm saying? Like in terms of like how they might be thinking about converting them being the, the people on the other side of the ad. But like up until that point, it's really exactly the same. Yep. Uh, it's just a call to action. Just like you can mm-hmm. make a YouTube video and I could say, go to no labelsnecessary.com in this video, or I could say, go to no labelsnecessary.com slash monetize, mm-hmm. right? By the way, go to no, www.nolabelsnecessary.com <laughs> slash monetize because we do. I have a video now speaking specifically on this monetization. Um, I'm working on that series for y'all who don't know um, to help y'all understand how to monetize through completely different ways from DSPs. But most of the stuff that we talk about to Jacory's point is literally what are you saying? Where are you driving the traffic to? We teach you how to drive traffic in a plethora of ways. Mm-hmm. It's up to you where to put it. We speak on the platforms that we speak on because y'all ask for those specific platforms. But the people who go deep, they already know. Yeah, they they know. already know it's there because we got people who are making tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars using the information that we've put out on the other thing. So go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. I think for the people who are looking to make money, that'll be a good rabbit hole for y'all to go down. Um, Thea Shea, she asked... Considering the interview we did with Justin Phillips, how you can build a million dollar clothing brand. Go check out that interview we did with Justin Phillips. I'm curious on your opinion on merch releases for emerging independent music artists, especially in the context of establishing a long term brand as your music gains traction. Right. So here's the question. Would you recommend starting with basic merch and gradually moving to higher quality pieces Or do you believe investing in quality items right from the start as discussed in the interview? Which one is a better approach to you, Ja'Cory? I believe I gave Theo the advice of um, 80% basic pieces, 20%, you know what I'm saying, Uh, more well-thought-out custom pieces as the base bills. Because the reality of it is, man, is that custom pieces are expensive. You know, like to give somebody a high-quality hoodie or shirt or jacket is going to be a lot of money, money that you might not have out the gate and, you know, might not even have the fan base to really need to care about that. But what I've seen in the emerging stages of an artist is they usually just want to, like, buy something. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying, like, go get, like, a shitty Gildan tea. You know, like, there are ways to give decent quality uh, merch items at a, at a, at a pretty, pretty good price 
But that's why I would start like, hey, let's maybe POD or print on demand, uh, some decent merch, some T-shirts, some things like that. And then as the base builds, then we can do these special high quality drops. Yeah. Every every now and again. Yeah, because high quality merch sounds great until you see how much it costs. Yeah, until you're sitting on that right? shit. Right. And you're sitting on it and can't <laughs> sell it for sure. For sure. So I'm all for that strategy of, yeah, let's one do print on a man. It's a lot more than you think it is. Trust me. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like we already knew that it was a lot more than we thought it was. And then we did it and it was way, way yeah, more than we Still got shocked. Do, right? Still got <laughs> shocked. Shout out to Justin for telling us to slow ourselves down in that direction. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and one thing I will say too is I think like she's asking about quality in terms of the the actual, actual material. material. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you can do high quality ideas. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got an ad the other day. For, it wasn't an artist merch, but I think it could be cool artist merch where this company is selling car air fresheners that are in the shape of like vinyls. And so you can get mm. different album vinyls. And so I'm looking at that shit, like I think it's, it's probably like 10 cents an air freshener if you do like an order of a thousand or more. So you can get a hundred dollars worth of a really unique merch item, you know what I'm saying, that is is quality because of the idea and you yeah. still don't have to break the bank. So like I think that's another way to think about it too. If you're wanting quality of materials, yeah, that shit gonna be expensive, you know. And, but you can find a good middle ground. But if you are willing to stretch your brain and think about some shit, yeah, you can have a very unique um, merch drop that still doesn't really cost you a lot, you know. Because as we've learned, man, these 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 Chinese vendors, man, like they can. If you can dream it, they can make it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can come up with it, it'll get done. You just don't know when you'll get it. <laughs> oh yeah, no bullshit. So, hey, but <laughs> hey, with all that being said, so I like to think of it like this, right? People know that you are not big popping, big pimping. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people are willing to grow with you. High quality design, right? Like actually be thoughtful in how it looks and then hit that messaging on point. Like whatever your message for your audience is, connect with them there. And then, yeah, improve your merch over time. Nobody's expecting the highest of quality. Now, if you're building this brand on some type of high quality, like fashion driven approach, then that's a whole nother thing to consider, but most of y'all don't need to do that, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, like, I think that's really it, it's straightforward. Don't overthink it, do what you can afford, and then as you get bigger and bigger, then you can take those bigger risks, because it is a risk yeah. as well. Yeah, facts. Amy said, I have an artist who wants to focus on doing more college shows. He's planning on mass story viewing colleges and having a virtual assistant pitch <laughs> his EPK. <laughs> to organizations at schools. Is there anything else they should be doing to get more college shows? First of all, first of all, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I, I love when artists take these, you know, interesting hacks <laughs> of getting attention and and building leads, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're basically doing real outreach to these college shows, right? mm -hmm. uh, these college organizations. It's a sales funnel. Sales funnel. <laughs> I'm gonna send the EPK and then I'm going to create some social level of relationship by interacting and engaging with your organization online. And these organizations, by the way, a lot of these organizations, the organization pages, don't necessarily have that much engagement usually. Mm -hmm. They might have a little bit from people who are there, but like an extra bump in engagement, they will definitely notice. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see that comment. Yeah, Somebody's going to see it. Somebody's yeah. going to see it. The person <laughs> managing it will see it, right? Because like, we had a whole talk with some organizations, right? Yeah. And they were thirsty to figure out how to get people more involved. Yep. So, yes, engaging with these organizations is a beautiful strategy for anybody who wants to do shows with the college organizations. There's a nonprofit organizations, any of these people. Like, there's a, a full strategy. You just have to make, find the ones that make sense for you. And with that said, because I happen to know, you know, this individual um, and this strategy, my biggest thing that I see with shows, and I've told them this, is most artists don't do a good well of good job of capturing the experience of their shows. Mm -hmm. So, yes, getting your streams, bam, puts you in a beautiful place, right? And getting some followers and real fans, beautiful place because it makes you look more attractive and more realistic. All that's great. But a lot of these college shows and these organization shows, one, they're looking for somebody who just can perform and can entertain their employees, mm -hmm. right? Their members of their program. They're not thinking like, I'm gonna bring Drake, all right? Because if they did, they would just bring Drake and they use different budgets for different events when they're trying to use, get marketing to actually get 
those type of artists sometimes. But they're yeah. smaller events. They're not looking for that type of thing. Yeah, because right? to that point, with colleges, they're usually trying to keep it in house anyway. So yep. sometimes having an act that might attract too much of the community is a is a bad thing, right? Like if I'm in Georgia State, you know what I'm saying? I just want Georgia State students to come, but this shit reaching all the way out to people in Riverdale and them people, folks trying to come up from Riverdale. There's a little bit of a conflict there, right? That in too. terms of safety and things like that. Like to your right. point, like we're not looking for max bang for buck in terms of draw. We're looking for max bang for buck for entertainment value. Entertainment. Yeah. And an office party is different than a concert. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so make sure you show the experience of your show. Right? Do a really good job of highlighting that experience and the vibe of it. Not just you performing on stage where you literally could be any different type of event. Like capture audience interactions, maybe talking with people in the shows at the end, maybe people giving a review of your show, like was it dope, was it not? Um, if you're, well, you don't want that, was it not? We're not putting that in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> and like what can you do experientially even though you're not maybe controlling the entire environment with production value, how can you make it feel unique, right? So like capture that, put that experience in footage, right? That is very much so worth investing in a high quality reel. All right. People think about music videos, no, a high quality reel that's going to make you money directly by pitching it to an organization and they're able to see you and the experience of you versus the next artist. That's going to help you get that extra money. And this artist that we're talking about has already gotten, he's probably at least made 30,000 around college shows over mm -hmm. time at this point. All right. So, Capture y'all's experience. I know it might not seem like it's worth it for some of y'all if you're already getting shows, but once you start to get shows, you will get more shows and more money by doing that. All right? Now, next, we have Melissa Karayuki. I think I said that right. How many super fans do you think artists should have in a city prior to organizing a live show there? A range should be, would be appreciated. This is even for a small show of, let's say, 70 people. 70 people, you should be able to get that off of friends and family and a couple of fans, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, and right? I agree. Yeah, I agree. She wants a number? I, like, but if we had to put a number on it, I was like 30 to 100 people in that city. Because it was seven. And but she, so here's my problem. She said super fans. I don't think you need super fans to hit yeah. 70 people. You just need mildly interested people. Yeah, you just need <laughs> good people who yeah, rock with you enough. Maybe you got five of those who are like fan fans. Mm -hmm. But you need enough people to rock with you. And then you need to create the experience in a way where they would bring their fans. Mm -hmm. yep. Once you do that, right, you really only need 35 people to bring one more person. Mm -hmm. And then you break it down from there. And I think the problem is, and this is when we go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. That will also be in the description below for those who are watching on YouTube. Like the whole like paradigm shift that artists um, need to have. And that's what I'm spending pretty much the next six months leading people down is you can create concepts in ways that will attract people who aren't even fans of you. And I think we spend too much time looking for super fans of just your music when the reality is, if it's only relying on your music, you're at a deficit. But there's people who start brand new events every day and bring out hundreds of people when they don't have a known name, they're not a known mm -hmm. promoter, and they don't have any music. They just got a DJ. Yeah. In you know building. what I'm saying? <laughs> a DJ in the building. Yeah. I, and I agree. Because, you know, I, I understand why she's asking about it from the super fan perspective. You know, she she's probably been watching a lot of us talk about conversion rates and things like that. But to your point is if I, one, if you have good timing with it, right, which which, which kind of goes into market research. I'm planning this event at a time where it seems like there's not much going on that could pull away from me. I'm like, yeah, you can get the lukewarm fan to come out just as easy as you could get the super fan to come out. You know what I'm saying? They both need something to do that, that Thursday night. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They both are aware of you and at least interested in you. And then to your point, ideally they got at least one or two friends, you know? That's um, it. And if you can create an experience because this is where the big brain comes in. You're not crafting the experience to necessarily attract the super fan. The super fan going to come with, uh, regardless. You're crafting something that's interesting enough that the super friends, fan, friends are cool with going. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> like, exactly what it is. Like, hey, I know you're going to go, but your friend might be like, uh, I ain't really feeling it. And then that could knock the whole operation down. And it goes back to the same reason I talked about building that video reel 
of what your experience looks like, not mm-hmm. like what it looks like you performing on stage, the experience, because your job is to make it easy for people who already love you to sell other people yep. to come down your rabbit hole. Yep. That's it. Now, that's it for this video. If y'all like episodes like this, we will do more Ask Me Anything where we use those questions from the No Labels Necessary brand and network community. If y'all want to go there, it's just www.nolabelsnecessary.com. Make sure you do the www. This is yet another episode. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at NoLabelsNecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.